I have a student who has recently asked me how to divide fractions. Now, since all he wanted to know was how to divide fractions, I'm going to assume that he has background knowledge in adding, subtracting, and multiplying fractions. So dividing fractions is something that we're going to try to build on his prior knowledge with. When we add fractions, we have to worry about the numerators being the same. Like if I have one half and I want to add to that uh, three sevenths, I can't just say one half plus three sevenths. I would have to come up with like denominators. And in this case, this is uh, what I would wind up with. Uh, a problem that looks like this, where I would have 7 plus 6 equals 13, and then I would have 14 stay in my denominator. Uh, this might be confusing to some kids because they might not really understand how to get like denominators, but if my student already has this part down, then dividing fractions is going to be a lot easier for him. And the reason I say that is because you don't have to worry about like denominators. When it comes to multiplying or dividing fractions, it doesn't matter if the denominators of both fractions are the same or not. It just doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to do one of our, uh, an example of a problem. Let's say that I'm going to use these same two fractions as an example. I'm going to go ahead this time, I'm going to write one half, my division symbol, one half divided by three sevenths. Now, the only thing that we have to do in this situation is we have to change our sign to multiply. And I'm going to use the dot for the multiplication symbol here. And then we have to do the reciprocal of three sevenths. So instead of three sevenths, we're going to say seven thirds. Now we just have to just go ahead and just uh, multiply. One times seven equals seven. And then two times three equals six. Now, I always want to simplify my fractions, so I'm going to simplify this one. This is what we call an improper fraction. The reason it's improper is my numerator is a greater value than my denominator. So to simplify that down, I have to know how many times 6 will go into 7. Now, uh, that's, that might sound like a division part there to you when you simplify, and that's because when you have a fraction, essentially you are dividing. Uh, that would be the operation, but uh, 6 will go into 7 one time and I'm going to have one part left over and I'll still have my six as my denominator. So that would be one and one sixth. Now let's kind of look at this question, this problem again. The first fraction in your problem, it stays the same, no changes. I had one half written here, so I just wrote one half here. We do have to change the division sign. No longer are we going to uh, divide, we are going to multiply. And then my second fraction, I have to uh, do the inverse of it. Instead of three sevenths, I have seven thirds. And then I just multiply straight across. One times seven gave me seven. Two times three gave me six. And so I had seven sixths. And then I simplify that down to one and one sixth. Now, when we look at this problem over here, you'll remember that after we came up with our like denominators, 14 and 14, the only part that we actually added were was the numerators, 7 and 6, which gave me 13, and then 14 stayed my denominator. So I just wanted to kind of mention if you've got good background knowledge on adding fractions, there are some differences when it comes to dividing them. One difference, we don't care about having like denominators. The other difference is we do the we flip our second fraction and we multiply straight across. Numerator multiplies numerator, denominator multiplies denominator. Now we'll do another quick and easy one. This time I'm going to clear my board. This time let's say I've got the problem uh, four ninths and I'm going to divide four ninths with um, three sevenths. Now with this problem, let's see what happens uh, as we try to work it out. Now you'll remember, like in my last example, the first fraction stays the same. You'll remember from my previous example, we get rid of the division symbol. 
we replace it with a multiply. This time I'll put the standard x. And then we do the reciprocal of 3 sevenths. So instead of 3 sevenths, I'm going to have 7 thirds. And then I just have to multiply numerator with numerator, denominator with denominator. So 4 times 7 is 28. 9 times 3 is 27. Now, once again, I have an improper fraction. And what I need to do with this improper fraction is like the other one. I need to see how many times 27 will go into 28. And it will go in one whole time. And then I'll have one left over, one little part left over, and then my denominator stays 27. So 1 and 127. Now I'll do one more example. This time I'll leave this one up here in case we need to refer to it. And I'll just change the color of my ink. Now, on this one, let's see, I'll put it over here. Let's have 5 eighths, and let's divide that with, uh, I'm going to try to do a little something different with this one. We'll divide that with 10 sixteenths. And I did this one on purpose because there's a neat trick that you can do when you are uh, dividing fractions. So like before, like here, I'm going to go ahead and make my first fraction the same, 5 eighths. Then I'm going to go ahead and change my division symbol to multiply. And I'm going to do the inverse of 10 over 16. I'm going to say 16 over 10. Now this is where it gets a little bit uh, different. I'm going to do what they call cross simplify. Now when I cross simplify, what that means is I can simplify those two numbers, 5 and 10, and I can simplify 8 and 16. The way I can do this is I can try to figure out what is the greatest common factor that 8 and 16 share, and then that will help me simplify. Now, I know that the greatest common factor of 8 and 16 is 8, and 8 will go in itself one time, and go into 16 two times. 5 will go in itself one time, because it's the greatest common factor of 5 and 10, and it'll go into 10 two times. Now, I multiply my simplified versions. 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 2 is 2. Now, any time that we have a fraction where the numerator is the same as the denominator, we have a whole. It, it's like if I were to have uh, this piece of pizza here, and there, here's one part, and here's another part. There are two total parts. And if I ate one part, and then I ate the other part, I ate the whole thing. So that's how we get a whole. If our numerator is the same as our denominator, we have all the parts. So we have the whole thing. Now, just to take it up a notch, I'm going to show how to divide... Uh, with mixed numbers. Now this is nothing harder than what we've done with these other examples. The only thing is we have mixed numbers. So that will involve another step that we'll have to use. Let's say that we've got 8 and 3 fourths and we divide that with 3 and a half. The first thing that we have to do is convert these mixed numbers to improper fractions. And this is how we do that. There's kind of a little formula that helps you remember it. Your denominator times your whole plus your numerator equals uh, your new numerator. And then the denominator stays the same. So this is the formula that, that we use. So denominator 4 times whole number 8 plus 3. All right, so 4 times 8 is 32, plus 3 is 35, and our denominator stays the same, so that's going to be 4. Now, I'm going to keep that division sign until I get my uh, mixed numbers converted in proper fractions. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, over 2. Now, I can go ahead and solve this like I would any other division problem. I'm going to bring my first fraction down exactly the way it is, change this division to a multiply, and then do the inverse of 7 halves. I'm going to put 2 over 7. Now, 
what we can do here is I can go ahead and solve it 35 times 2, 4 times uh, 7, or I can cross simplify it. I'm going to do it both ways, just for demonstration purposes. 35 times 2 is going to give us 70. 4 times uh, 7 is going to give us uh, 28. Now, I can reduce, change this improper fraction to a mixed number. 28 will go into 70 twice, so that's two whole times because uh, 28 times uh, 28 is going to give me uh, something like uh, 56. And 50, 70 take away 56 is going to give me 14. And then my denominator is 28. Now, I need to simplify again. Uh, the greatest common factor of 14 and 28 is 7. Uh, I'll take that back. The greatest common factor is 14. 14 will go in itself one time, and 14 will go into 28 two times. Now, I have to say, that's, that's quite a bit of steps there. If I cross-simplify it, I'll make it a lot easier for myself. So in this situation, uh, 2 and 4 will cross-simplify. 2 is the greatest common factor of 2 and 4, so 2 will go in itself one time, and it'll go into 4 two times. 7 will go in itself one time. 7 will go into 35 five times. So here we have 5 times 1 equals 5. 2 times 1 equals 2. Now, 2 will go into 5 two times because 2 times 2 is 4. 5 take away 4 will leave me with 1, and then I got 2 as my denominator. Now, notice that I wound up with the same uh, answer, but this one, even I got confused for a moment there when I looked at 14, 28, and I just thought 7 was the greatest common factor when, in fact, it was uh, 14. So uh, I do like that cross-simplifying. I highly recommend that my students do that. So dividing fractions isn't that difficult. It's uh, very easy as long as you do it step by step. And I hope that this video has helped. Now, for my little student, I'm going to give him a chance to get some extra credit points. I'm going to put up here some problems that he can solve, and if he'll bring those to me uh, next day that we have school, uh, I'll give him some extra credit for it. And if I have any other students who would like to have that same opportunity, they can do this activity as well. But I did make this uh, lesson for one student in particular who requested it. Uh, so I'll be putting up those problems in just a moment. Okay, here are the problems that I promised I would uh, post for some extra credit. Here we have some examples, uh, and there's just six of them, some examples of uh, just fractions by themselves. And then here we have some uh, fractions and mixed numbers, and in some cases we have whole numbers. Now. Um, I just assumed that my student understood how to add whole numbers and, and, and subtract and, and multiply uh, numbers so, uh, and fractions and mixed numbers and all that. So I, 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 I figure he knows that when you have a whole number such as in this case 11, you would put that as 11 over 1. And when you have 8 over here, you would uh, record that as 8 over 1. And I, I want my little student and any of my students in my classes to try out these 12 problems. You can pause this screen, kids, and uh, record them on your own paper and then send them to me uh, however you want to try it. And I appreciate you watching, and I hope it helps. Thanks.